which came out of Microsoft, perhaps been run by Microsoft people too, uh, which has tools, automated software tools, to do things like automated reply or with all kinds of automated drafts to respond to people in blogs, in, uh, in Twitter, and in, in all kinds of social, so-called social media sites. Uh, so a lot of these thing, a lot of a lot of these activity or a lot of these things that you see on the web, they are managed very systematically. Uh, very, you know, they have a good methodology of how to, to run these things and they know exactly what they need to say, what to say, and who to say this to. So they would possibly track a person like Tim and know that he's run, running a, an, an, a, a podcast or an audio cast, uh, as we call it, uh, about Microsoft in quite a negative way. And they will try to do what they sometimes call uh, schmutzing, which is uh, the act of trying to uh, be nice to a person who could be even a suspecting person and trying to make that person uh, feel almost obliged to, 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 to give back the affinity that the person has been given, even though it's, if, it, if it's fake. Yeah, I think it surprised me actually a while back um, when I heard about Wagner, Wagner El, Elstrom, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, I, I pronounce it with a, a German sort of Wagner rather than Wagner, but I don't know anyway. Whoever it is, I remember looking up them before and finding it rather odd that a company as big as Microsoft, as from what I remember, it might have changed now, but I, I suspect it hasn't. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the press info on Microsoft.co.uk, I think, um, for if you want to contact them for all different purposes, mm -hmm. who do you contact? And every single one of them is v Wagner Ekstrom. Ekstrom. Yeah. Yeah. Same company. Yeah. It's not Microsoft. You don't contact Microsoft. You contact these other people. So that that says all. Any time they do something, they are speaking for Microsoft. It's linked directly from Microsoft on site. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the the whole Twitter and the following thing, one of the things that I do, I mean, when I blog, I don't blog about any one subject. I've got various different topics that I write about. Only one of them happens to come onto Windows and or Microsoft or whatever, or Windows Phone Seven or whatever. So I think. As far as that's concerned, I'm not quite as big of a target because I'm not a single, almost like a single subject kind of blogger. Um, I've got quite a varied source, a varied part. Um, but other, the other thing I do as well on Identica is I automatically, when I set up my, my Twitter and Identica account, I set it up so that it did not automatically follow people who followed me. Um, so I mean, sometimes I'm talking away to someone and I actually think that I've subscribed to them and I'm looking at replies back and forth and other conversations with them, and I'm like, oh, hang on, I thought I thought I subscribed to you. <laughs> yeah. And then when I click on follow this person, um, I got one from Mal Maloki. I thought I had followed her. I've been talking to her for ages. I thought I was following her. And then she dented back and said, oh, you just followed me. Oh, I forgot about these emails. <laughs> I forgot you got an email telling me about that. So what I found is it was just easier to do in groups. Um, where you join groups, like join the Linux group, join the, in my case, the Ubuntu group and the Mint group and whatever. So I just found it easier to do that rather than follow individuals because a lot of the same people um, are swimming in all these pools. Um, and it's sort of, it's easier than doing one person at a time. Um, and it also, um, the amount of different spammers that turn up um, and subscribe and you're automatically subscribed back to them. Yeah, um, apparently v Windows 7 is a person too, because that's an identical now, and they create all these groups, and they have those marketing, obviously marketing things going around spreading Microsoft stuff in Identica, that, or at least setting up the placeholders, like groups and stuff. And, and the I, I, I listened to talking about that, um, a quick sort of very slight detour, and then we'll come back. Um, there was, I, I listened to the uh, the comedy podcast from um, from Five Live, and one of them had a, as a comedian doing a stand-up thing and part of the show. And part of his joke was about products creating Twitter accounts. So you've got, you look at a tin of beans and it says, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> it's like, you're a tin of beans, you're a product. <laughs> you're not a person. You know, it's a, a, a packet of nappies. Follow me on Twitter. I mean, what can, what can a packet of nappies possibly say on Twitter? You know? <laughs> Yeah, the so, notion of, of what an account now, the account has sometimes become like an RSS feed and you can subscribe to something of interest to you. And I know Facebook has been more 
uh, strict about these things. You have to provide things like age, and I know that delete accounts of people who want to be anonymous. Uh, there was the case of Mini Microsoft, which is a, an anonymous Microsoft employee, and I think they deleted the account. And uh, I think in Facebook there is also this entity of things like you know causes and groups or whatever. But in Twitter, I suppose it kind of changed from people to things like companies and products. Is yeah, that's that's really a bit strange, I suppose. When when you start to to open accounts for all kinds of things, and if you do list all the accounts of companies like IBM and Microsoft, you'd have at least hundreds of accounts. But just about everything, and then you have the sites that cover the things that cover certain products, and they too have an account. So, <clears throat> so um, from one from one point of view, I could understand a company, not just Microsoft, any company, going out and saying, "Get the Twitter account for each one of their trademarks, um, so that no one can pretend to speak officially." I can understand that. What I don't get is I'm actually using these accounts. It's just a sort of block. I can understand it from a blocking measure. Um, and the same as going and getting the, the URLs as well for each one of the trademarks. You know, I mean, I, I would imagine Microsoft own Windows.com. I'd be stunned if they didn't. Um, but, I mean, okay, that that would be a, that would be a valid using, reason for using that domain. But you know what I mean? To, to stop other people pretending to speak mm -hmm. It's a very controversial the trademark, by the way. And people yeah. mention the, the Windows trademark, especially in the context of Apple getting the App Store, which basically means, well, application store. <laughs> it's not a very generic term. Uh, and then there was the Lindos case. And I think Microsoft ended up paying uh, Lindos to rename to, like, whatever they chose, Linspire. Uh, and, yeah, and, 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 and it, it's it's not that they defend these these trademarks. That's that's not really an excuse. And to be honest with you, as far as I know, if somebody is tweeting and pretending to be Windows or pretending to be a spokesman for something on Twitter, they will delete the account if the, there is a complaint. A uh, forgery and stuff like that is 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 actually being addressed by by these sites. And and I actually had accounts deleted which pretended to be me. Uh, I had like four people. Four accounts pretending to be me on Dig, maybe five, and I had a couple of them I think in Identica, and the, the people who run those sites basically just deleted them because they said it was just supposed to defame uh, the person who it claimed to be. Uh, with politicians, that, that's the tricky one. Sometimes you have the fake ones, and you have the ones that are basically satirical in nature. Uh, and I think when you use satire, it's 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 a bit different than when you do try to confuse people and to misattribute quotes to a person who some people might think is actually saying these things. Um, so, so yeah, well, uh, I think he was just returned. Uh, I, I should just point out to him, we're talking about Twitter accounts and, uh, and the fact that the companies might argue that all they do is, is try to register accounts for things that they own in, ter in terms of trademarks. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember years back, and I did document this on an article. I'll, I'll try to link it in the show notes, but I mean, it should be quite easy to find with Google. I had a, a Twitter account called Microsoft Legal, um, which was obviously fake. They hadn't even gone to the effort of making a, a logo for their uh, or an avatar, um, and that was that was sending me a few messages about watching me. And uh, as you can uh, as you can appreciate, I was very very frightened, and it it stopped me. Uh, Writing any blog articles that was I think that was about two year, two years ago I think uh, that one came yeah, out. That, uh... I think you've got to look at it as well as who it's not so much who's following you but who you are following and who you are actually communicating with because um, as I said to Roy I mean the, one of the things that I do is I turn off the automatic follow someone who follows me um, I turn that off right from the start when I set up these accounts but mainly for for spammers. Um, and those spammers join me, I automatically join them, so no, I'm not having that, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, the other thing I did with Identica is use groups rather than individuals uh, and subscribe to groups because a lot of people are in the same group um, of the things that I'm interested in. Um, so, I mean, I suppose that's a more sort of realistic way of doing it, uh, of looking at who you actively subscribe to rather than who subscribes to you. Yeah. Uh, back in the days, it used to be very clean and identical. And one of the reasons I could follow back people who followed me was that there were no spammers, and barely any spammers at all. What I was trying to do by uh, ticking the box was to save myself the trouble of following back every person who followed me. So I'd have to like, click and say subscribe, and <clears throat> I, have, I have like 600 and something subscribers. 
and and the fact is eventually what happened with the spammers came and just saw them accumulate and I was just oh, I, can, I can leave that alone for a while but then I actually found that I had to go through all of these spammers and remove them manually every time they added the thing and I just found that this option instead of saving me time it was just